Hey, what's going on YouTube? Jay's Two Cents here, uh, bringing you kind of a late night vlog. I'm here by myself at the studio. Uh, late, rainy night, couldn't sleep, so I decided to come back in, work on my personal build a la old school style. Back in the day when it was just me running the channel, this is how it was. It was just me holding the camera, pointing at my face in the garage till two, three, four in the morning, working on systems. And you know what? I'm kind of looking forward to this. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption that new stuff from iFixit. Wish you didn't grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Okay, so a lot of this is gonna be my hand pointing at stuff like this behind the camera because it's uh, just me here. I got no cameraman or anything. So anyway, this is my former build, Black Ice. If you haven't seen this yet, uh, it's a very different build now. Um, also too, if you haven't seen the first part of this where I kind of went over some of the parts and stuff that's in here, uh, make sure you go and check that out. But there's obviously been some changes since you guys saw it last and I wanna kind of go over that. Um, in terms of parts and stuff, hey, hey, it's me in a reflection. <laughs> Anyway, wow, it actually facial recognized on me right there. Dude. Okay, anyway, sorry, ADD. <clears throat> so when it comes to parts, many of you figured out, it was pretty obvious, the CPU I'm using in here is actually the AMD 7950X3D. Now, I've never used the X3D CPU before. I never had a 5800X3D. This will be my first time checking it out. In fact, a lot of you even asked me like, where the heck is your review about this? So I ended up running a little bit late on this build. Yeah, jokes aside, blah, blah, blah. Um, because of the fact that the cables that I had ordered um, took a little longer to make it through customs than expected. So it's put me a few days behind, whereas I wanted to actually have this build done and then have the review be of my system. Um, but, you know, I basically took a chance with this going with this 7950X3D um, with my personal build, having the fact that I've never used it. In fact, I don't even have a working BIOS on this motherboard yet to use that particular CPU. I still have to BIOS flash this motherboard to make it even recognize the 7950X3D. So I watched a lot of the reviews along with you guys um, on how the performance was because even though I had one for review ahead of time, uh, I haven't been able to fire it up yet. So based on the reviews and stuff that I've seen so far, I don't regret my decision um, in terms of gaming, which is what this system does 99% of the time and slash live streaming, which is, I do gaming streams on Twitch. It's not, I feel like I'm having to justify a $700 CPU in that, like why I didn't I go with a better CPU. There's really not a better CPU for AMD. And when it comes to gaming, based on the benchmarks I've seen, it's beating the 13900K. Um, and it's running cooler, it has a lower TDP, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Anyway, some stuff has changed in here in terms of I've progressed into how the loop is gonna work. Um, I wanna go over that with you guys now. So this is my 4090 Strix uh, with the EK water block on it. It is not the active backplate, and the reason for, the, well, you know what? It might have actually worked with, with this block. See, here's, well, this, this right here. See, here's the problem. A lot of people kind of warned me that if I was running a, a uh, motherboard that had a big cool or like heat sink right here behind it that it would interfere with this it's not focusing on there. it wouldn't interfere with it would interfere with this not allowing it to actually seat now obviously I didn't do a vertical mount in this which is kind of why um, I ended up going with the non-active backplate I have an active backplate model here I could technically take it off and swap it I don't think I need to though because there's nothing actually on the back of the PCB like memory chips or anything that need to be cooled, just the backsides of the VRMs and stuff. And if you saw my installation video, this does have thermal pads on this metal backplate here. So this is acting like a big, a big heat spreader, um, which is gonna be working just as well as any backplate would have. But anyway, let's talk about the loop order. Starting at the pump, this is the Singularity Computers um, pump uh, distribution res combo for the Inwin 925. And then this is the um, distro plate that they designed for the bottom, which I've got to tighten that screw up, that they designed for the bottom to be able to just add some uniqueness to the bottom of the case. This is completely unnecessary. This is just a very fancy way of having a tube go from the pump outlet to over here somewhere. So as you can see, this right here 
is also um, all rigid tubed. So you can see I have a 90 coming out with a male male fitting into another 90. In fact, let me show you what that fitting looks like because I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of questions on that. So this right here is a seven millimeter male male fitting. As you can see, it's got a threaded uh, G quarter thread on each side. So that's what I use to have the 90 on either end thread together so that I could have a completely rigid uh, connection there. Now the, you can get this fitting in a seven mil, a 14 mil and a 28 mil. In fact, I have those right here. So here's the 14 mil next to the seven mil, and then here is the 28 mil. So if it would focus, <clears throat> you can see that it really kind of goes uh, seven mil and then double thickness and then double thickness again. I have a lot of extra fittings because they're not that expensive. They're about $10 a fitting. Uh, compared to like the price of like Bits Power and stuff, EK fittings are actually fairly reasonable um, in terms of pricing. But I've got a lot of fittings left over here because I, like, I had to order a bunch more stuff. So this is the EK Torque. This is for the 14 millimeter tubing. It is a um, double O-ring. So it has an O-ring inside and one that clamps down on the tube. I've got some of those left over. Um, I also have the black ring installed. You notice how it's black inside there. That's because EK sells these decorative rings in different colors that you can thread into it. So you can have a little bit of a contrasty color going on there. So as you can see on all the ones inside the system here, um, I do have the black fittings in there. Now this fitting right here, this is just an offset rotary fitting. So this just comes in handy if you have to offset a tube back to a particular location. So as you can see here, I have got rigid fitting into another 90, into a male, another one of those seven, mil seven mil millimeter male male fittings going into my Barotech flow meter slash temperature gauge. Um, going into an offset because I need it to connect right here. So you can see I've got this extension there. The fans are in here right now, and I'll explain why in a second. I uh, will be putting those back in, but I have that offset down, which actually aligns with this offset here. This is probably not gonna be perfectly level, which means I might have to adjust the height of the radiator a little bit, but I don't have a lot of movement that I can move it, because as you can see, I've got another rigid fitting coming out into a 90, into an extension, into another 90 that lines it up perfectly with, with the return on that reservoir. So if we look at the loop order, it comes out of the pump, through the 90, down into there, through this, into a 90, a 90. And these are very high flow 90s, by the way. Um, every time you add a 90 into a, into a loop with fittings specifically, you do create more back pressure, which means you need more pump pressure to come over it. Fortunately, a D5 um, is pretty good at overcoming pressure. So anyway, then I can just go with a 90 coming out of this fitting. And I apologize for the focus. The autofocus is kind of freaking out. Um, but it comes out, we'll just be a 90 tube from there up into here. We'll talk about this in a sec. I just got really lucky that it all lines up on the exact same plane so that a simple 90 is all I need. In fact, I've got my loop finally figured out to a point to where all I need are small 90 tubes everywhere. I don't have to do any double bends anywhere. Anyway, 90 into the GPU, through the GPU, out of this tube uh, fitting right here. And again, as you can see, it lines up perfectly. 90 into this array of fittings that I have right here for the CPU. The bottom is the inlet on the Velocity 2 block for the AM5 socket. So it will go in there, go through the CPU block, come out into a 90. And then this 90 lines up perfectly with this one. So again, another 90 degree tube in there. And I don't know how well you can see it through the grate, but it does actually line up perfectly right here. And I do have an offset fitting on here just in case I had to align that a little differently, but it lines up perfectly with this one right there. It might be off slightly, but again, I can just offset that to get it to where I need to be. Anyway, coming out of the rad right here, goes through, as I already showed you, through this double, through this offset, into this one, into the rad, down, back, and into there. So there'll be a little tube right there. I did try and get one of these 28 millimeter male male fittings in there because it actually fits in there perfectly. The problem is I can't thread it on because as you can see, it's not a rotary. And obviously the threads on either side are opposite of each other. So turning it clockwise would just be loosening this side and then turning it counterclockwise would be loosening that side and tightening that side. So it's just not, with this being a 90 right here, there's just not a way to tighten that together. Now the other thing I thought was like, okay, if I took this out 
and I took it out connected to here and then took out this radiator. So this is why there's no fans, by the way. Took out this radiator. If there's fans, it hits on this piece right here. So I can't slide it out. So the fans have to come out. Well, Jay, why don't you just take off the bottom piece like you're intended to? Yeah, well, this is blocking the screws as I've showed before to get this out. And this is connected to this and the fittings are now blocking the lower screw to get this out. So it is like structurally assembled now. So that piece is like not moving anywhere. But anyway, I can take this radiator out. One hand is very awkward. So there's that. The radiator is out and I have access to here if I need it. Um, there is a pump in here, as you can see the wiring, it's not sleeved, which I'm not too happy about. So I could have had that rigid tube attached to this and had this all assembled in some weird concoction and have someone help me get it in there. But you know what? I was just like, you know what? That's a little bit more work than I, I wanted to go through. And if I ever had to service the system, it would be a complete nightmare. Anyway, moving on, what is this? This is my drain. Normally I want to get the drain in the lowest part of the loop possible. Lowest part of the loop technically is down here at the bottom of the rad. Impossible to get a fitting down here of any sort. There's no fittings. So I just opted to go anywhere I had a spare port and that is the GPU. And if I ever need to get air out of here, all I'm going to do is unscrew this, screw a fitting into there with a tube coming off of it into a bottle, undo the plug up there, pop this guy out because you, you pull this out to open it and then fluid will drain automatically. And then I can just put compressed air in there or blow in there um, to get as much coolant pushed out to here as possible. Not the most ideal drain situation, but the only one I could come up with in this particular scenario. But the only one I could come up, up with in this particular scenario. And uh, like I said, not completely ideal, but not the worst either. I've got my cables in for this, but I ordered some custom cables from Cable Mod that have that nebula theme with like the purple and the, the light blue and the black. The problem is I'm kind of leaning towards just going with a basic black set now, which I ordered uh, off Amazon for my particular power supply here. And it does come with a 12 volt high power cable and sleeved and all that. And they're just black. And I think I'm gonna go with that. That way I'm not stuck to any particular color theme and I'll use those cables in another build. So let me show you the pre-made cables that I got um, from Cable Mod. All right, so here is the Cable Mod Pro Cable Kit. Um, yes, I know it's on its side that I got from Amazon. It is specific to uh, the EVGA power supplies that I have. That's why it's called E-Series, but it's a pro with mod mesh. And yes, Cable Mod is a sponsor of the channel. However, they did not sponsor these cables. Um, the cables that I got through sponsorship for this build, like I said, got held up in customs. And so this is just a pre-made pre -made cable set. Um, but it works with all the G-Series, P-Series, and T-Series power supplies from EVGA. And this is just a plain old black cable set, nothing special, nothing to write home about. So this is the 12 volt high power cable. So because I, it's the pro cable set, technically it has a heavier gauge wire and I have to like train these wires here. It comes with five pre-installed cable combs, which is nice to keep it nice and organized as you can see right here. Now the ones I ordered had nice aluminum, um, combs on there, but again, this is just an off the shelf kit. It was 99 bucks for this kit versus like the 200 and something dollars for my custom cables. Um, but as you can see, it is the 12 volt high power. So my issue here is a lot of folks were like, Jay, you should get the 90 degree adapter with how recessed the plug is on the Strix. I mean, look how recessed that plug is right, right there. I don't believe the 90 degree adapter would work here. I can still try it later. Um, it's an easy cable to access in this build, but as you can see all the cable mod, cables have this like cover on here. Now this one isn't as nice as the one it took off because the one it took off was metal. This is a much more basic um, build in terms of cables. So I have to take this off to make it fit because it's touching, like it's impacting right here on the bottom. So let me take that off real quick. So as you can see, it just pops off right there. It's nothing special. So then you're left with this right here, which again, not the prettiest cables, but for now, uh, I think it'll get the job done. So in terms of it plugged in, as you can see, I can easily make that bend right there and it's not too crazy. It's, it's a little bit closer to the plug than ideal. As long as I have the cable combs on here, um, 
I'll be able to bend it back and get it through this hole, no problem. I'm probably gonna use this hole rather than trying to go back through here. But you know what, ultimately cables are the least of my concerns. I need to start bending some tubing. So I'm actually just gonna bend a bunch of 90s. Uh, let me show you the tubing I'm using. I forgot to show that as I kind of move this out of here. These are some sexy radiators. I'm so happy. I, I don't, this is lighter than I like, than I, I, I hoped it was gonna be this color, this titanium. But, oh well, it still kind of adds to the build a little bit. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and show you the tubes. This is not the first time you guys have seen me use this tubing. This is PMMA from Corsair. Um, I don't know who they source it from. As you can see, it's this kind of a translucent, uh, kind of a satin tube. But yeah, it's 14 millimeter by 10 millimeter inside. So I just think, I just think it'll look neat in there. Now the thing with PMMA is it takes more heat and more time to bend. It's very dense, I don't know how to explain it. And cutting it, you have to use a saw. You can't snap cut it or, or use the, like for cutting PVC pipe that you can use on PETG, you can't use it on PMMA, it'll shatter it just like acrylic. See, I've been on this for a while now and it's still barely starting to bend. But you can get tighter 90s with PMMA. And you can get it in clear, frosted, and black. As far as I can tell right now, Corsair is the only company that sells it. But Corsair, I don't, I'm pretty sure it doesn't make it. I'm pretty sure they just source this from somewhere. They're not a plastics manufacturer. Okay, I'm not sure how well it picks it up on camera. There's a silver Sharpie mark there and a silver Sharpie mark there. Those correspond with me basically just holding it up <clears throat> and kind of eyeballing where the marks need to be or like where the tube needs to end to fit in the fittings. But I give myself a little bit of relief where I've got extra to trim down. So I'm gonna cut these about a half inch or so back from those marks and then I'm gonna trim it down to these marks using a different tool. All right, so we've got rough edges on here that need to be smoothed and cleaned up. You can see I haven't gone down to the marks yet. Uh, but this right here is the Primo Chill RBF tool or rigid or RFB, which is rigid finishing bit. Uh, you guys have seen this before. It basically goes on the end of my drill. Um, I've had it in 13 millimeter, and then this one's a 14 millimeter. So as you can see by the part number on here, the RT14M tool, this is designed for 14 millimeter. So here's the end of the bit right here. It even has a ball bearing, like, uh, it, well not ball bearing, but actual bearing in there that will turn inside the tube to keep it from scratching. But as you can see, this U-joint, this U-joint fits right on the tube like that. So if you just spin it slowly, here we go. That just sort of rounded out our tube on the edge and on the inside. So, sorry for the squeaking sounds, but now it's smooth and it's not sharp, which means we won't cut our O-rings. And then we can even use that, if you push hard enough, to shorten the lengths of the tube, it's just, it's gonna take a minute. All right, so it looks like we're pretty good in terms of distance to this fitting. It's still too tall to fit in this one here though. So when I put it horizontal, you can see it's too long. So now I'll just start taking off like a millimeter at a time until we can get it to line up perfectly. Because as soon as I move this more perfectly perpendicular or parallel with the rest of the lines right here, it looks to me like it lines up centered in there. All right, and there we go. So there's the 90, it's in, it's tightened down. It's pretty dang good, with a tiny bit of sag in the graphics card. I've tried to do my anti-sag methods as best I can. Um, honestly, I'm okay with that, and that's just because of how close this fitting is to the, to the edge right there. I could have tried bending another one and heating it to a tighter 90. I don't think that's gonna be necessary. In fact, it looks even worse on camera than it does in person. Like, I really can't be too anal with that. That's really not bad at all. So now I just gotta repeat that like nine more times. All right, so the entire loop is done as you can see. And yes, I went ahead and redid this tube. This is what I love about PMMA. You can get such a tight 90, like it's such a tight uh, radius here versus like any other tubing. So you can see, I did have to add this, this uh, rotary right here, this offset rotary, because I noticed once I did my 90 that it, was not perfectly aligned with here like I thought. So it's over just a couple of degrees. Not really all that noticeable when you're out of the system, but I just need to point that out that it was like off slightly. So I had to fix that. But anyway, this is perfectly horizontal because the height here is allowing for it. 
There's this 90 right here, like I said. Here's my flow meter going to a perfectly horizontal pipe. And yes, that was perfectly horizontal. And these are the scraps I have left over from using two tubes. And as small and as insignificant as these small tubes right here might seem, keep them until you're completely done with your build. Because remember this tiny little one right here? This little connector tube? That is a perfect fit. And it was actually a, a piece I had cut off and it fit in there absolutely flawlessly without having to trim it or anything. It was just a scrap I picked up and went, it looks about right. And you know what? It was. So there's that. And I could not be happier with that. Now we still have to leak test it and I can actually leak test it without having to use fluid. And I'll show you how in a second. Um, but yeah, I was, this is that original radius. Whoops. This is that original 90 right there. So look at the difference. Yeah, it's a much more swooping 90 versus Look, the other one fits inside the inside radius. Like the outside radius of the new tube fits inside the inside radius of the old one. So yeah, that's why I redid that. And everything just looks fantastic. So how are we going to leak test it without fluid, you might be asking? Here's how. So this right here is the XT leak tester from Corsair. Uh, it's a pressurized pump. So basically it's got like a Schrader valve. It just has this adapter here that terminates to a, it's basically almost like a, like a bike pump that they've sort of repurposed into uh, a Schrader valve that then goes into a G quarter thread. So since I have one tube on, or one spot on here that's not being used, which is my fill port, I'll be screwing it into right there, or I could do it right here on the GPU. In fact, I'll probably do it on the GPU and leave the fill port in there. Um, although maybe I should leave it as it's gonna be that way if this were a leak, although I doubt there, that's a leak. It's just, it's not very long. See, it doesn't really make it out of the case too well. It doesn't really matter. So what you do is you pump it up until you get the uh, needle into the green, which is a little over a half a bar or about seven and a half to eight PSI. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it there for like 10 minutes and see if it bleeds any air off. If, it if the needle moves at all, then that means we have a leak. Now here's the thing. That green there is way more pressure than the pump will ever make. So if it can hold the green pressure of air, it will not leak fluid. Okay, so there's clearly something leaking because I can't get it to pump, hold any air. Okay, so it appears we might be leaking from the pump because I had to take the uh, pump cover off a couple of times when dealing with the plate. I have a feeling it's either this, oh yeah, this white O-ring wasn't even on there. Look at that. Let's try this again. So it might've been this right here. And that is why leak tests are so important. I had this piece right here, cause remember I told you I took it off to have to do this connector and stuff, uh, 180 degrees off. So it was upside down, which means one of the O-rings and holes didn't line up with the port at all. So that port was just bleeding or puking air because there was no O-ring on it whatsoever. So the pump is good. Let me get this back in there. Let me get the pump back in there. Oh yeah. We're building pressure now. Go up to the green. So if you can kind of see that on the needle right there, it's in the green. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just, I'm not gonna let it hang by the fitting. I'm just gonna let it sit there. So it's actually been over a half an hour uh, because I got busy watching some YouTube videos and lost track of time. But as you can see, the needle hasn't moved, which is a good sign. It's like almost two in the morning now. So might as well just kind of keep stuff going and it's raining hard. I know you guys can't hear it in the lav mic. But anyway, if I move over here now, uh, now I gotta put my fans back in the front. So I am using the Lee and Lee Uni fans, v, the V2 fans, which all three of them are connected together. So I just put the whole thing in here, screw the screws in. There's plenty of room to go in that direction. Uh, and then the fans are reattached. So because this is a front mounted fan, it's gonna be pulling air through. So I gotta put the cage side facing in. That's one of the things I like about the Lee and Lee fans is the fact that the LEDs are on both sides. So it doesn't matter if I'm intake or exhaust, the fans, lighting is still gonna show. So see, easy. Fits in there just like that. It's the best thing about having fans that connect together like that is the fact that I can just 
take them out when I need more space and then just put them back when I'm done. The downside of this particular system, exactly the way that I have built it, is it goes together in a very specific order. So if I ever had to take things out and apart, it would be not very user friendly. Okay, it's nearly four in the morning and I'm still going on this thing, but uh, we're pretty damn near done here. It's fully wired up, fully plumbed up, leak tested. Um, yeah, everything's plugged in. Let's go and take a look at the backside. It's not the cleanest wiring, but it's not terrible either. I mean, everything is traceable. EPS wires coming straight down, 24 pin coming around. So that way it looks prettier from the front side. Comes around and down. We've got the Lee and Lee control box right here in the middle. Uh, what I still have to do is on this piece here, I have to install the fans and then this mounts to the back and then it has three fans on there. So I have to install the three fans and then the one wire that comes off it that will attach uh, right here on the side of the box. So that'll be a quick, easy run. This right here that looks kind of like a little cluster. Um, this is a ARGB splitter box designed by Singularity Computer. So I installed that because of all the RGB devices in here. So they all plug into one spot now. So this is running to the motherboard and they're all plugging in. Sorry for the focus. They're all plugging in right there. And I need to keep this area as clear as possible just for aesthetics because if you look at it from the front side, you can kind of see down in there. I've got a little bit of wire hanging down. I don't like that. But for the most part, you're not gonna see it. But what's left to do, like I said, hook that up, uh, get the system filled and bled, get the BIOS updated, and then get Windows and everything installed. So that's where I'm gonna kind of stop for the night because I would have filled this right now for you guys, except I don't have any distilled water. And since I'm using the EK uh, fog fluid, which is, has that kind of a foggy effect, um, obviously I have to mix that with um, distilled water because it's not a pre-mix, it's a concentrate. So I got to mix it myself. But yeah, it's coming along nice. I'm pretty excited with the way it looks. Um, I think what I may end up doing is uh, just kind of pausing this video here for me. And then uh, when the guys are in in the morning, uh, we'll get some distilled water, get it filled up get a film montage and then that'll be it. It is really raining outside. So anyway, I'm gonna get a few hours of sleep. We'll be back to finish this off. It's tomorrow, today. I'm so tired. I've gotten maybe an hour of sleep, if that, on a couch here. So anyway, my fleshy tripod known as Phil <laughs> is here. So we get to finish. <laughs> we I'm so delirious right now. This is gonna be interesting. Um, my eyes bloodshot because they feel it. So I asked Nick to get me distilled water. He got me way more than I need, which is perfect because we have other bills that we're gonna need it for. Anyway, I need to retest it again because uh, I don't know if you guys recall, I took the pump back out for a second. I think it was to tighten, oh yeah, it was to put to tighten the fans back on when I put the fans back on the front here. So having the fact that I removed it and put it back on means I need to leak test again so I can make sure that there's no, like that O-ring is good in there. We'll just let that sit there for a minute. I don't know, maybe like two minutes. <laughs> You don't have to fill the whole two minutes, Phil. Okay, well, we are at the point now where I'm going to have to take off the 24 pin right here, put my jumper on there, um, do my mix, squeezy bottle of distilled water, and where is it? This is the EK fog. I hope to God it doesn't clog. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. So I'm gonna end up taking this empty Corsair 1000 milliliter XL8 bottle with the green fluid. This when it made it into my daughter's build. Pour this in first. This should dilute 250 mil to 750 mil water, I believe. So I'm gonna mix a thousand milliliters first. That way, if it takes the entire thing, then all I have to do is uh, mix another bottle and then I'll have leftovers. Shaking it up made it very foamy. I'm a little concerned about that. It did say shake it really well though. Let's see, that's not too bad. So it just looks like non-fat milk. Sure. It, it reminds me of like, dude, if it's this watery, go see a doctor. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so gross right now. <laughs> I know. Like on the bottom, look at the bottom. I, I see it. It's just. <laughs> see, and I get to fill with confidence because I just did the vacuum. I should probably put that. 
That, 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 <laughs> wow, <laughs> Philly with confidence, Jay. I'm so happy it didn't come out of that hole right there. Almost had a Kyle moment. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> it would have it would just gone. <laughs> Glad to see that Jay has upgraded to the epitome of uh, monitor technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I mean I'd have to hook a monitor up to see if it posts. It clearly posts. I have to update the BIOS obviously for this particular CPU because the X3D BIOS isn't on here yet. Um, the pump stopped turning on and off with the power supply, so we ended up just plugging in the motherboard and letting it fill this way. And as you can see, it works just fine. Well, it wouldn't be a JS2 sense build if something wasn't right. And uh, it dawned on me that that Barotech flow meter is default right to left flow for reading flow rate. To get it to switch to the other direction, you have to take it apart and invert the impeller to go left to right. And that is the flow direction. So now I guess we get to test my drain. <laughs> I have to take the pump off too, because I can't get this out until the fans are out. I said this in my vlog. There's a very specific order of operations that has to happen with this build. You can't get to this without that and that and Yes! Nice. Yes! Oh, no! It was so clean until now. If I had just known this, we would right now, RDP, probably have an OS installed, a BIOS updated, and some RGB effects how I want them. <laughs> you guys love seeing this long format, all the shit hitting the fan, or in this case, the impeller. Yay, 5.31 liters per minute. Nice. Let me get Windows installed so I can get my RGB control on here. That way you guys can see an epic film montage, because I told you this was gonna be vlog until it was done, and then Phil gets to do his thing. I almost knocked over my monster. Okay, it's done after, I don't know, 13 hours of straight work on it. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. There's very little uh, that I wish I'd done differently. I'm kind of glad I changed my mind on the cables and ended up ordering the black set. I don't know how well it picks up on camera. Camera's grabbing light like this. It's very saturated light. It's hard to see. It's probably coming off as white, but this is like a, a nebulous vaporwave magenta slash tealy color uh, that I have the L-Connect, passing through to the motherboard, so Aura Crate, or Ari Crate with Aura is actually controlling the Lee and Lee lights. And what I like about the Lee and Lee L Connect 3 is the fact that I can independently control or pass through the fan control and the lighting control rather than having them sync together and pass through. So what I mean by that, it means the motherboard can actually control the L Connect device, both lighting and fan speed, but before they were synced, where if you turn that on, fan and lighting was controlled by the motherboard. Um, whereas now they're independent and it's windy and the door is squeaking, can't do anything about that. Um, it's still stormy here in SoCal, but now I can have a custom fan curve in L Connect 3 set to either CPU or GPU and have the lighting be controlled by Aura. So I'm very happy about that. And then I had to run IQ to be able to have the uh, Corsair lighting 
running. I, I kind of wish that the motherboard was able to control the uh, Corsair light effect on there, but it can't. And I want to switch to I don't want to switch to G skill memory because I really like the way the Capellix looks. Um, but that's an easy swap later if it starts to bug me. <clears throat> this was an entire build of nothing but luck with the way everything lined up. I looked at this case in this loop order for about a week going, there's no way I'm gonna make this look neat. There's no way I'll be able to make this look tidy. And then ended up, then ended up making the decision to go with silver fittings or the satin titanium fittings. I was about going black tubing, black fittings, and I was like, that's all just gonna disappear into the build, especially with the tinted glass. There's no glass on here right now, obviously, but. So I made the choice to go frosted tubes and silver satin titanium fittings. And I thought that it might end up being too much. I think it balances out really well, especially with the look of the distro plates in here. One thing I forgot to point out, um, all my slot covers in the back are 3D printed. Nick printed those because I lost the covers that went with this because I was running the vertical mount and I didn't want to seal them from another case. So Nick 3D printed those, uh, which turned out perfectly. I have to come in and reset my, um, my sensor panel here for, you know, I'll probably come up with a new design because before it was set up for black ice, which was a much more black and silvery theme. Uh, so I'll be redoing that. But right now it's just showing up as a main display. Worst land rig ever. The biggest, heaviest tower with the tiniest impossible to see screen. <laughs> so I don't know if there's anything I would change. I don't know if I regret the 7950X 3D yet because I haven't used it. I also haven't used the 13900K as a daily rig. So based on all the reviews I saw, depending on the game title and depending on the, the, the workload, they just go back and forth with each other, which is great because I don't feel like I'm giving up anything with going with one or the other. When two CPUs are battling and they're like leapfrogging each other, depending on what, they're, what the test is, either or is gonna work fine for you, unless one of them is terrible at a certain test, but there you go. I'm happy about this build. I hope you guys enjoyed Phil's montage. Um, it was fun to kind of get back to the whole just talking about the build as I'm doing it thing. It was very tiring though. It's time to get some sleep. And if I drink any more caffeine, I'm gonna literally piss myself. So I don't wanna do that, but all right guys. Sorry for the low energy, but I've been up for 38 hours or whatever it is.